going back, did you have any sort of inkling lately that anything was going wrong or anything? Or was your dad just dad and there was no real sort of signs for you? Or He had reached out and he had asked for help, but at the end, I think it was just all too much for him. The burden of, mm. of depression was too much for him. And just to, just to explain to our listeners the story of when Netflix rocked up to your house and, and what they did. In North Wales, I think Rob and Ryan have took women's football and yourself, mm-hmm. obviously, included with the rest of the girls at, Re- at Wrexham. I think they've took it to another level. I really do. Yeah, well, what they've done for Wrexham is, and Wales, you know, it, it, there's no words for it. A big thanks to Willis Cleaning Services for sponsoring This Girl Can Play. Scan the QR code or click in the description below for more information. Brilliant. Welcome to This Girl Can Play. We're finally here in the studio after months and months of preparation. I'm really pleased to be sat across from uh, Lily Jones of Wrexham. Lily, how are you today? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. In the studio, myself, Andy Hughes and Leon Pickford. Hello. I think uh, start straight away with uh, this season. First time in the big flight. Um, how do you think the season's going? Yeah, really well. Um, we've had a really positive start to the season. I think we, we set out to get seven points from, from the first three games and we managed to do that. Um, I think we've exceeded expectations, really. You know, We've competed with, with, with the top teams, Swansea. Not so, it's not so well against Cardiff City, <laughs> but you know we're, we're having a really positive start and we're, we're hoping to, to take that into Christmas, really. Is, is the Champions League the, is that the goal? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's no point playing in a league without hoping to win it, is there? Um, but yeah, I think the Champions League would be brilliant. But, you know, realistically, we, we want to be competing in the top four and we'll see where, where we take it from there. If we go back to the uh, last game of the season last year, 99,000 at the race course. Being a Wrexham girl, that must be uh, one of the most proudest moments of your football. Unbelievable. It, it was goosebumps, you know, walking out. I think we were told before the game there'd be six, 7,000 there and we're walking out and you're not seeing a seat spare. Um, best day of my life. Uh, it's cringy, but... The I was there myself, honestly. The atmosphere was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan and Rob were there as well, weren't they? But it was, it was actually like a little bit emotional as well, you know, because we're obviously girls and that's what our girls are aspiring to be. It, when the, when Rosie scored that winner, it was um, it, the place just went absolutely mental, it didn't it? it? How did your sort of mentality go into that game? Really? How did that change? Was that, was that like an everyday game for yourself or, or did your preparation change? Did the nerves get affected in any way or was that, listen, I'm going to work, I'm going to, I'm going to put on a performance in front of 9,500 and, and I'm going to show them what I can do? Yeah, it was a weird one, I think. Um, I had the, the documentary crew at, at, at my house before the game um, and I actually walked to the race course um, <laughs> no which is a bit mad isn't it um, yeah I walked five, five minute walks I thought no point no point driving there um, <laughs> so that was a bit weird because I was kind of soaking in the atmosphere as as I was walking you know I, I do that that walk every day watching the, watching the lads as a fan yeah um, I think mentality wise it was, it was just another game for me yeah. you know you do have all, all that added pressure in the warm up when you start to yeah. see like wow pe- people are actually Coming here to watch was it, this. Was it treated any different in terms of you going earlier, pre-match meals? Um, not so much meals, maybe. I think we were in earlier just for media purposes. Um, yeah. But we, we, we tended to try to stick to what we were used to, you know, try and keep things as normal as possible. We had Phil Parkinson come in before the game as well, which was mad for me. I don't know about the other <laughs> girls. I was just like, we got to see for Phil Parkin the change. So I take it you're, you're, the, you're the Wrexham fan as well? Yeah, yeah, massive season ticket holder since I was six, so... Wrexham through and through them. Through and through, yeah. Yeah, so walking out on that day then to see all those uh, see all those people there watching Wrexham, but not only Wrexham, Wrexham women. And it's it's an amazing achievement. And as, as Leon mentioned, uh, we're proud to have the two girls who are age to 11 who are, um, are the reason for us making this podcast, really, because we've got no idea how to navigate the world of women's football and we need your experience. You need to educate us and, on that pathway and, and how to become the person you are and, and, and sort of teach us to to guide those girls really so what advice would you give 11 year old Lily if you were talking to 11 year old Lily now in a, in a football sense what advice would you give to Lily Jones that's a tough one um, I think as an 11 year old I was still playing with the lads um, mm. so so for me I think I'd just be saying get involved you mm. know be the loudest player on the pitch be 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 who people are excited to go and watch mm-hmm. you did know, that improve you playing with the lads or do you wish you'd stuck with the girls Um it goes without saying, you know, the lads brought out my physicality. Yeah. Um, I think when I first started pl- playing with the lads, I was kind of pushed to one side, you know, being, being the only girl. Um, you kind of have to earn your respect. Yeah. Which is something 
that has definitely built me as a player and as a person as well. You know, when when people are kind of doubting you and saying, you know, don't pass to her, she's a girl. Yeah, yeah. Or I don't want to tackle her, she's a girl. But then eventually, you know, when you're throwing in 50 50 to the lads and, and, <laughs> Launch them the and you're scoring three, four goals on, on yeah. a Saturday for them, you do earn their respect and the parents' respect as well. Which... I think that's another reason we've started this podcast is some of the negative press from, from men and boys on the playground because. I know Daisy certainly has, and you know, and Brooke has as well. Mm. Is there anything you've ever been said that, you know, was not not nice, really? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I used to take it as motivation, really. You know, <laughs> when, when people are giving you bad press, you just think, you know, I, you rise above it. Well, yeah. I, def- I definitely did anyway. I remember playing against Coyd Poyth, It was um, that's under nice 10. place to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> Coyd Poyth, um I'm one of the lads that that was marking me from from their team. Now said. I'm not tackling her, she's a girl. And I thought, well, I'm just going to knock it past you every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ended up scoring eight goals, I think, or something stupid like that. And then he started to, oh, to yeah, put yeah. a foot in then. Um, but, you know, it's little things like that that, for me, just boost, boost the motivation yeah. and makes me think, you know, like, this is where the women's game's going. Yeah. It's showing, yeah, yeah. showing lads, I, and women as well, you know, people, people put, put the women's side of the game down all the time. But I think with... with I think England winning the Euros as well. Yeah, that would be massive, wouldn't it? It's just Huge. women's football is going to be massive, and I think that that pathway is still kind of being made, isn't it? You know, Definitely. there's there's so much development to come and to be part of it, and for your girls to be part yeah. of it as well. It's I just... took Ella about three or four years ago to the same club, North of Paul Girls, where these are at now, and they played once a month. There was probably about four teams, and now there's what ten, ten in the league. Yeah, out every week, aren't they? Every week, you every know. single week. It's probably it's probably as big as the boys. As the girls is now. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I, one of my mates is um, sister. She's just started playing, and I remember going going to watch. It was I think Brickfield. Yeah. Um, yeah. I used to play there when I was younger for the mm-hmm. lads, and I, I remember walking out. I was walking my dog just to, to go and have a look, you know, see see what girls teams were playing. And every single pitch had two girls teams yeah. playing against yeah, each yeah. other. Brilliant to see it. That's like, amazing. We're down on a on a Saturday morning at yeah. Rollies Drive, and it's just it literally is women, girls after girls after girls playing football, which is which is amazing to see. But I know you mentioned that pathway has improved and it definitely has. And I've seen um, over my lifetime or sort of the last five years, a big jump in the, in the, in the, in the female game and the opportunities you've got. How far do you think we still got to go? Um, it's a tough question. Um, I think that there is stepping stones still, still to be had. Um, we stepped up massively this season at Wrexham, mm-hmm. getting an SNC coaching, looking at nutrition, looking at, you know, how the menstrual cycle affects affects a women's game, how our bodies are different to men and how, you know, I think sometimes a lot of research that's been done on football is, gets wrongly kind of inputted onto the women. Yeah, you yeah. know, what the men do is what the women's do. Yeah, yeah. You only have to look at Arsenal for ACL injuries, you know. Things need to be, be done different, mm, you yeah. know. We're not men, are we? So I think that that's, there's still a lot of research to do with that. Yeah. Um, but I think things are looking really, really good. You know, was it sixty five thousand at Aye, Arsenal, Arsenal last yeah, week yeah, or the week yeah, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Selling out Wembley after Wembley game after yeah. game after game for the Lionesses. No I think you hold the record for North Wales, don't you? Yeah, that, yeah, nine that, and a half nine thousand, thousand people. And that doesn't happen even in the men's game. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You, you look at the, the Welsh Prem. Mm-hmm. Well, how many were how many were the Cardiff um, game two weeks ago? That was about six seven hundred, which is unheard of in yeah. Lo- lo- yeah. local little games you're not like getting that. that much in the Welsh Prem no no in, way in the men's game no so we've, we've took the big steps forward when do you think you can say listen we've this that's done we have now we are we can't go any bigger now for me I, I was thinking about a question um, and for me it goes right back because when I was when my wife was pregnant I said and I did I said I wanted a boy because I wanted to get involved in football mm-hmm. now for me to looking back to say that we got yeah. Brook now. He's playing at a, a re, you know a really good level. Quite embarrassing, really. And I think that there's something that I think we've got to. It, it needs to go that far back for me. That the, the upcoming dads yeah. need yeah. to stop thinking that lads play football and girls yeah. do. Ballet. Yeah, I mean, my dad was was never of that opinion. I don't think mm. he was. He was always ready to to, to chuck me in with the lads. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think it is about opinions, isn't it, and stereotypes. Mm. But I do think they're getting kind of kicked up the arse now aren't yeah. they yeah. I think that's another I, I was saying that's another reason why this podcast comes about as well because I spoke to men and they've turned around and said to me I'm, I wouldn't watch that girls football I'd rather watch this instead of watching the girls football yeah. and I, I just think 
you need to just watch what you're saying because it's not nice because at the end of the day, that's that's our girl's dream. Yeah. Along with thousands of other girls like yourself's dream yeah. to be a professional footballer. And for people to put them down like that, I, I just think it's unfair and it shouldn't, it shouldn't be happening. So people need to start thinking what they are saying before they're saying it. And the way to do that is by proving them wrong. Yeah, you you're know, right. Words, yeah. words don't go very far. It's, it's all about the actions. And, you know, England winning the Euros goes and proves every man in England do think the men's team are bigger wrong, doesn't it? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. The, the, the trophy cabinet it says, yeah. It says yeah, differently, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> the Lionesses are bossing it. And I think that's massive for, for women's football, you know. I know I'm, I'm Welsh through and through as well. And yeah. I said I'd never support England, but what they're doing for the women's game is unbelievable. And I think that's the only way we're going to be able to, to kind of get rid of them stereotypes and get people like yourself back in the day to think, you know what? Yeah, yeah. That, there is future in this. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a real sport. It's not just, you know, your B-Tech men's yeah. football. It, it's a whole different game. You know, they're, they're not really comparable. We were talking before, weren't we? Yeah. You know, you can't compare the physicality of a man with a woman because we're not men. No. You know, yeah, yeah. You, obviously a man's going to run probably faster than us most of the time, but it's just a different game. And I think when you kind of get rid of that, thought of you want the women's women's game to look exactly as a men, you kind of think, actually, you know, this you is quality them, football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it's, yeah, it's quality right. football and it, it's it's different football as well isn't it? yeah. it's really yeah. high level isn't it and we've been to we went to watch um, Everton last week yeah, we? yeah. really really impressive like so so impressive to watch you know it's, it's come such a long way and it's, it's really yeah. good to see um, we were chatting before Lily before we came on to, on air and we were um, you mentioned don't want to pick up on the documentary <laughs> just, to, just to explain to our listeners the story of when uh, Netflix rocked up to your house and, and what they did I, it made me laugh anyway yeah it was mad Um you know, the the experience of being on a documentary or something I never never thought I'd have, you know, I'd never thought I'd see my face on Disney Plus. But <laughs> um yeah, it was mad. I, we had the I think I had a phone call the day before saying, Listen, um, we wanna come and do a master interview. Um so I think the crew of six rocked up at the house and moved all the sofas, moved all the <laughs> TVs uh, and put a chair and then we have big like glass bifolds on on the back 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 wall. So they were there putting a big black curtain over it to make sure the lighting was all right. And they sat me down with this big, like, floodlight on me. And I was just sat <laughs> thinking, you know what, like, this is Hollywood in Wrexham. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing they give you loads of, loads of sort of warning that was going to happen? Yeah, there weren't much warning. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think it, it's just been a great experience, you know, having them in and around the training ground as well. We're all getting mic'd up in training and... You know, it's mad to hear what you say as well in training. You just think, why did I even say that? <laughs> <laughs> it must but have been yeah. good when he come to watch the game. Rob come to watch the game at the, where, where the old ground used to play at. Oh yeah, on Ponca, that was crazy. Because <laughs> that's just like, I grew up, I, I, did, I had all my summers there with my mates, you know, playing on that field, you know, kicking kicking the ball by and it ended up, yeah. you know, coming home ground. Um, and as you can see probably from the documentary, the pitch was diabolical. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, you know, it's like playing on, sand it was just yeah. so muddy um, I remember Rob in his like brand new white train is walking on thinking oh bloody <laughs> hell welcome <laughs> to Rexham <Rexford. Yeah. laughs> no security or nothing he's just stood in between did you both know he was coming out. no no we didn't know we didn't know so we got there and we think he looks a bit familiar um, <laughs> but yeah he came in a- after the game as well to say you know we're going to set- step up the standards if you win the league and we went and done it 12 out of 12 yeah. And, yeah. and won the playoff as well so that's good that he stuck to his word didn't he now you're moving on to the rock now and They've said it from day one. Yeah. Rob and Ryan were, were backing us from day one, you know. They pumped money straight in, into the system straight away and we've managed to set the foundations now and I think it's just going to go above and beyond now for, yeah, for yeah. and winning. I do think the Lionesses have obviously took it to another level, but I do, for, in North Wales, I think Rob and Ryan have took women's football and yourself, mm-hmm. obviously, included with the rest of the girls at, Re- at Wrexham. I think they've took it to another level. I really do. Yeah, well, what they've done for Wrexham is, and Wales, Mm-hmm. You know, it, yeah. it, there's no words for it. No. They, they didn't, they, when they bought Wrexham Football Club, they did not have to do what they're doing for mm-hmm. us. You know, there's no way I'd been, I'd be talking on this podcast with you right now. There's no way I'd have been on Welcome to Wrexham if they weren't as committed as they are to, to boost women's football yeah. in, in Wrexham, North Wales and, and Wales. You know, we, we've had that push to, to go semi pro this season mm-hmm. and teams in the league have followed suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, standards are just getting higher and higher yeah. and higher in yeah. the women's game. and for your girls, it it will be proper professional, you know, yeah. when when yeah. they're when they're pushing first team and 
to be part of making that path possible is something I'll always be proud of. Brilliant. And then on that, we'll be mentioning Rob and Ryan. But for me, a massive mention is to, is to Gemma Owen as well. So how influential is Gemma and the work she does is to look after one team must be, yeah. but to look after every other every team. How inspirational is Gemma and what does she, what does the reaction look like with her? She's unbelievable. Um, I think from the day she probably started at the club, I mean, I, I can't speak for her, but I think she's always just wanted to push the game. She will do whatever it takes for us girls to be all right. You know, she sorts us out with kit. She's coaching. Mm. She's in and around the club every single day. She She's wrecked them through and through as well, which helps, you know, when I think when you're in love with a club and when you're completely wrecked in mindset, yeah. You know, you do give everything to it. You know, mm. she, she's married Gareth Owen, one of the, the biggest <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rex and yeah, legends. Yeah. Um, I managed to get him part part of coaching the 19s as well. Really um, good coach, well. Really good coach. Unbelievable yeah, coach. I've worked, I've worked on them again. Really good coach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, what Jem does for Wrexham is is mad. Uh, literally know? from under, I think it goes under eight. From every training chapter, kit, bag, fixture, training session, everything, isn't it? From top to bottom, is it's. Uh, large Emma. I don't know how she, I honestly don't know how she does it <laughs> no how she finds the time and the day to for everyone she, she answers every single message back within 10 minutes you know if there's a problem she solved it by the next day <laughs> yeah yeah you know she's oh, she's unbelievable and I don't think Rex and women would, would be where we are now without her right so you've had experience obviously going back early in days with Everton do you, do you now compare sort of the Wrexham journey? Is that the standard that you think Wrexham's going or are you there yet or how far off are you of that? Yeah, um, I think when I first came back to Wrexham, there was only talks about Rob and Ryan coming back, you know, and I was thinking this is kind of a step down in standard for me, mm-hmm. um, which wasn't ideal at the time, but all I needed was my home, you yeah. know, after. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, the standards probably weren't there when, when I first came back from Everton I thought you know oh, this is going to be, be a bit of a slog but it just proved me wrong in every single sense um, we get to train and we're there to work Yeah. Um, last season well it shows you know yeah. we trained and we got the results that we wanted um, with the, the semi-professional status and obviously with the S&C coach and, and the coaches coming in standards are unbelievable they're mm. exactly where they were at with Everton um, I, I honestly don't think I could pair them now we it's it's up there with what I was training at, at an RTC, um, and I think that's what we're striving for. We're, we're striving for excellence. We're striving to be the best in Wales, and after that, hopefully, yeah, you know, yeah. one day we'll we'll get put in the English leagues like the men are and go and be a WSL yeah, club. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah. one day. Yeah, um, yeah. So, what age did you get picked up at Everton? Um, I think I was twelve. So I was playing with the lads, and then obviously at twelve, I got told, "Come on, yeah, go yeah. find a women's team yeah, now." Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was playing. I went to play for Wrexham actually. Um, I was at the, I think it's called Racecourse Foundation at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was playing there for a season, played against teams like Australia. Um, and then I thought, you know what, I'll go and see how I, how I can compete with the big boys. <laughs> um, so I just went to an open trial with Everton. Okay. I think there was 200 girls there to start with. Me and, and a few girls from Wrexham, so Tia Lockley and yeah. I think Polly at the time, all three of us went together and thought, you know, we'll give it a whirl. Um, and it was like a whittled down thing. So you'd go to one trial and then about 100 girls would drop out and then another 10 girls would drop out. And I remember it was a week of just I had the worst blisters ever, you know. Yeah. Bought these new Predator boots, you know, <laughs> worst decision of my life. Hope you were fine, new boots on, on trial day. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Big thing that. But um, yeah, yeah, I remember I was, I was in year seven at the time, I think. Um, I was sat in the class and the head of year come and told me, like, you made it to, to the, last, the last trial at Everton. I remember my dad coming to pick me up, getting changed in the yeah. car. Going oh, did the school organise it for you, did they? No, I just needed to leave school earlier ah, to, right, to get okay, to the yeah, trial, yeah. but I thought, you know, you only hear back the day before, like really? that you need to be at the next trial. Um, That's nerve wracking for a girl, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Literally yeah. sat there in school thinking, am I, aren't I going to be called yeah. back for the next trial? Yeah, I got I got the call back, got the nod, and ended up making a squad, and so did the two other girls from Rexon that, that we went with, Tira and Polly, both both of us, all three of us actually went went and played for Everton then for two seasons. Three seasons now, actually, um, and yeah, that was an experience and a half. Yeah, <laughs> playing, yeah, you know, playing against Man City, playing against Liverpool, Everton. I remember like my mum asking, "Oh, who have you got next week?" Oh, playing in the Merseyside yeah, Derby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, so where you know, did you train? Yeah, we did train. So twice a week we were training at a uh, university in Liverpool, Hope University. 
which decent facilities. Um, and then we pl- we trained on a Wednesday night sometimes at Finch Farm as well. So that was crazy Experience, stuff yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, really good. So <clears throat> now you've gone from sort of Everton, you're back to Wrexham. Um, we okay to touch on why you sort of gone back to Wrexham? Yeah, you yeah, said, of okay. So obviously we're going to talk about your about your, about your late father. Mm-hmm. Um, looking back, um, obviously it's huge, isn't it? It's like mental health, and and it's 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 such a such a massive area now that needs real big focus. Going back, did you have any sort of inkling, Lily, that anything was going wrong or anything, or was just was your dad just died and there was no real sort of signs for you? Or, um, I, we obviously knew that he struggled with depression, mm-hmm. um, and I think depression looks different in different people. You know, my dad used to have six weeks of being on a high, mm-hmm. and that's that's the Gareth that everyone knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, big big character, always up for a laugh. Um, but then he'd have a week where. He just wasn't himself. Mm-hmm. And I think during them kind of last few weeks, I don't know if that's because I knew what's happened to happen yeah, now yeah. that I'm not kind of thinking, oh, you know, he wasn't himself. But yeah, them few weeks coming up to it, he, he was struggling and, you know, he did reach out as well. You know, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't kind of a thing that he kept to himself. Um, I, I guess not many people knew he did struggle as bad as he did with depression, yeah. but mm-hmm. it wasn't something he was embarrassed of. You know, he, he had he had reached out and he had asked for help, but... At the end, I think it was just all too much for him. The burden of mm. of depression was too much for him, and you know he ended up taking his own life, which is something that no one would have thought would have no. happened. But when you say he sort of he reached out, who was that to? Was that to professionals, or was that to you, or was that to your family or friends? Who was he? Who was he? Who was he reaching out to? Yeah, all of them. You know, um. we reached out to family. We were all there for him, and we we've all spoke, and we genuinely think we did everything we could have. Yeah. He mm. knew he was loved, and we knew he yeah, loved yeah, us yeah. as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, his friends, um, yeah, he was he was quite open with his friends. You know, the people he was working on the scaffold with, he was yeah, he was yeah. open with them, and the, he he what he, he had reached out to professionals as well. He was he was having his counselling. Mm. Um, but yeah, not, not everything works all the time, and I think that's that's where the research has got to go, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then going going on to the on to the funeral day, um, and you mentioned you were a really proud reaction girl through and through. To have your dad's job been past the race course, the streets lined like that, that is such a heartwarming reflection on your dad, I suppose. Yeah. You know, to, have, to have the streets, like, you know, so many people come out and in front of that ground. <laughs> couldn't believe it. Um, I remember the car coming to pick us up and we just kind of went, went to the race course. I was thinking, oh, I, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, mm. you, do, you don't expect things like that to happen yeah. anyway. Um, but yeah, we, we drove the car down Crispin Lane and into like the club shop car park mm. and the whole pavement was full of people mm-hmm. and I just thought like this is mad you know <laughs> and um, Gemma came then with, with a wreath kind of to put in, in the back of the car and we drove then down Mould Road I, honestly because it would just come out of lockdown or we were still in lockdown mm-hmm. so people weren't meant to be coming out okay. yeah, um, yeah. but both sides of the road were flooded with people mm. clapping yeah, and I, the I remember just thinking this is the kind of guy that he was, you know, yeah, yeah. people have come out of work, people have come out of school to show their respects and it was the whole way then, it wasn't just outside the ground so we drove kind of down a bypass a bit I think or down through three rows stuck in and there were people on the roundabout coming mm-hmm. coming off the bypass as, as people stood on the roundabout kind of, just people that we knew it and it, it yeah. wasn't even, it was familiar faces, you know. Yeah, um, yeah it, was, it was a very, obviously a very, very sad day but then again, it was just like quite eye opening, you know. When you lose one person, there's so many people it affects. Yeah. Um, t- to get everyone to come together as well and kind of bring a bit of spark to it as well was something that I think me and my family will, will always be very grateful for. And then looking your sort of early career, how influential was your dad? Or was you, were you and dad just that was you were football because your dad, or was it you know, how influential was he on Lily Jones and, and obviously her career? Yeah, massively. Um, mm. Uh, he wasn't a very good footballer. <laughs> <laughs> he loved football, though. He's a yep. massive, massive Wrexham fan. And I do think we had the conversation before he died about me going back to Wrexham anyway okay. from Evan. I mean, I didn't think I'd actually do no. it, but it ended up happening. But yeah, early, early, early days, um, he threw me straight in with the lads. One of his best mates was running the, the football team and he said, like, do you mind if, if Lily comes and joins? Because it was kind of unheard of for girls mm. to play with the lads at that point. Um, but I remember 
us walk into his house and I had to pick like a number out of the hat, you know, um, what number I was having on the back of my shirt. And I, rem- I remember the day so clearly thinking, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. Like, yeah. you know, I just love it. Um, and I picked number 20 out and I was number 20 for ages. Um, but yeah, he, he was really influential. Um, I remember in training, obviously when I, when I first started, the mm. lads didn't want, didn't, yeah. not that they didn't want me there, but they kind yeah, of just pushed me to one again, side. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I always remember him telling me, just get involved, get involved. That, that was the word he used to tell me every single time, you know, don't, don't stand on the side and let him bully about, no. get involved. And if it means coming out of position to, to make yourself get seen. Involved. Just, just get involved. And I did see the videos on um, on the documentary that you and your dad used to make. <laughs> <laughs> what, were, what were all them about? Oh, it was just mad. Um, I think he was trying to get Robin Ryan's attention, <laughs> which is so cringe now I think about it. Um, but in lockdown, I remember we dressed him up as David Bowie. Right? He had this mad idea. Right? He, he'd rewritten one of the songs that David Bowie had written and made it into a Wrexham song. And he said, come on, Lil. So he, he got, he'd come outside with two of his Wrexham shirts and put them on the, the washing line. And he said, will you paint my face as David Bowie? You know that? That little one. Yeah. yeah. Red six, so I remember I was just sat in the living room, like, painting my dad's face, <laughs> thinking, what the hell is <laughs> going on here? here? What are you doing here? <laughs> and then he said, right, get iMovie out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> now what's going on here? And he sat on, the, like, my mum's, you know, like, one of them sunbeds, like, not a sunbed. But, like a sun lounger. Yeah, 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 sun lounger. With a Wrexham shirt on, a David Bowie wig and a David <laughs> Bowie maker. And my mum's on a Zoom call upstairs looking through the window thinking, what the bloody hell is going on here? Um, so I was there then like filming my dad like pretending to be David Bowie. Um, Do you but, remember yeah. the words? Oh, can I? Like, it's on Twitter somewhere. It's on, it, on his page. It's actually worth the watch. It's hilarious. Um, but yeah, he always had these mad, crazy ideas for videos. There's a video of him like, Pretending to be a robber jumping over a wall, like <laughs> yeah, he, he was a crazy. He sounds like a man we we could have gone for a pint with. Definitely. <laughs> what do you think it made of sort of the current state of Wrexham and where 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 they they sort of the dimension where the club's going? What would your dad make of all this now? I, I, I say this all the time. He would not believe it. Hmm. He'd be on top of the world, and it's really frustrating that he can't be here to to kind of experience it with me. Um, yeah, he'd be loving it. You know, I th- he knew about Rob and Ryan taking yeah, over. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think he knew about signing Paul Mullen as well, he, I, I, but he didn't Super quite Paul see. Mullen. Yeah, he didn't yeah. quite see the super part. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Oh yeah, the fact we got promoted, he'd have had the best night yeah. of his life, and and the parade as well, and yeah, the, the fact pa- that I was on it. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he just, I, I don't think he'd know how to cope. No. He just, watching you walk out with the race course would have been. <sighs> yeah, he. It's, it's it's impossible for me to say how he'd yeah, been yeah. feeling because he'd have just been on top of the world and. People always say to me, oh, he's with you, he's with you, he's yeah. proud of you. But at the end of the day, it's just like, he's not actually there with yeah, me. Yeah. And that's so frustrating. But, but you, you have spoken before about sort of feeling your dad's sort of, when you're playing football, on, mm. you know, whether that be race course or like, you, you do feel your dad's presence. That must be a massive boost for yourself when, you, when you're playing. Yeah, I, I always thought, you know, before I lost my dad, like, it was weird that people said that. Like, how can you feel yeah, someone yeah. with you? Mm. And then, but until you've lost someone you love, you, you know, you see things and things happen and you think, yeah, he, he's part of that. Um, yeah. Definitely at the, at the race course, I could feel him with me, you know. Uh, when I got pushed into to send him mid, the first thing that came into my head was, come on, Lil, get involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and... Them words still sit Yeah. Um, and my mum always brings the flag with his name on to, to every see. game. And it's just nice to know, you know, he would have been there and there's people there kind of, you know, representing him. And, yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, yeah. Yeah, no, it's massive, massive boost to know. Yeah. You know, he would have been there and he probably is hopefully watching down. And if now if you're, you know, and it's really difficult to talk about, I, I totally understand, I really mm-hmm. appreciate being open and, and with us, Lily, is what advice would you give? Let's say there's there's a current girl going out there who's going through who's day one of that journey and they've just lost a parent, whether that's however way it is. What advice would you give to them as if for football-wise? I know it's a tough question, but... Um. It's hard because I don't even know what I'm doing myself sometimes. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm I'm still learning every day about how it is to deal with grief and what's the best way to kind of channel it. Um, I think for me it was pushing kind of any problems and any issues that I was feeling into my performance rather than locking it away. Um, Does football help? Massively. That That's what my dad's, me and my dad's relationship was built on. It was built on football. Yeah. 
I honestly don't think I probably would have coped with, without it. Um, I wouldn't have coped at Everton, you know, coming back home and, and being around the club that he loved. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's been a massive boost for me, you know. Um, yeah, I think doing doing things he loves and doing things in memory of him, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's so much good come from my, my dad passing. Uh, mm. That sounds so yeah, weird yeah, to yeah. say, but we we raised £10,000 for the food bank, you know. Um, the lads from the pub, from the turf, yeah. Which is his local. He wouldn't believe how big that is, by the way. Now, <laughs> um, all of us walked up Snowden, so you can imagine, you know, the lads at the yeah. pub like walking up Snowden, like yeah. from the turf to yeah. Snowden. Yeah, yeah. you um, couldn't get him from the turf to the Mike Squin last week. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> um, yeah, so we raised so much money for that. Um, my brother wrote a song and raised another thousand pound for the food bank, which is something that was close to his heart. Um, and then to be able to promote kind of the reality of mental health on a big platform yeah. like Welcome to Wrexham as well. Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, it's kind of, although it's a very negative thing, it's looking at what can you gain from this? Yeah. You know, what, what, would you, what would he want you to be doing? What, what can you do to kind of live his, live his memory on? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I think that, that's helped me a lot. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure, you know, your dad looking down now would be immensely proud of what you've, well, what you've achieved in your football career uh, and obviously the person you are, you know, you, you, you're a cracking girl to speak to and it's uh, come, really coming across. Um, obviously, I've only met you today, so it's, yeah, you've come across really well. What's what's the future hold for Lily, what, football-wise? What's your aspirations, dreams? Is it to see this Wrexham journey right to the end? Or, if, or I know you mentioned getting him up into the English leagues for the, uh, the, well, for the Premier League and where, what's his... What, what what's the future hold for Lily? Yeah, um, I get asked this a lot, and I never know the answer. Um, I'm I'm kind of going with the flow now because you just never know what's going to happen. Mm. However, I do want to do it with Wrexham. Yeah. Uh, everything I do, I want I want to do for Wrexham. And, you know, people can say it's it's the Hollywood story or whatever, but for me, I think without or with with the Hollywood cameras, Wrexham is who I am, and if I could take Wrexham to the to the highest level even if I get a chance to cap then at one point that would be mad yeah. Um, but yeah I, j- I just I just want to play for Wrexham that's all I think I've ever wanted if I, didn't, if I didn't know it when I was younger I think you know even if I get a chance to play at a race course again that that's a big dream for me to do it again um, Paul Welsh cap yeah I, I've, I've been through the ranks I've been, done 15s and 17s at Wales to get back in there with them would, would be amazing as well Um but yeah, I'm just focusing. So how often did you go with Wales? Um, so I, I got, I think I got called up to start with at 15s when I just signed for Everton. So you know when you when you sign mm. for a big big name club, you you were you are tending to get a call up. Um, I feel down to Swansea, Cardiff. Yeah, yeah, it was it was Cardiff every other month, I think something like Never that. Never up north, is it? It's always down south, isn't it? Never yeah. up north as well. That's why Collier's yeah. Park was built, wasn't it? I know, yeah. And since since Collier's Park's been built, I think the last few camps I went on were all up north which Brilliant. was really really good yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah 15s I got the chance to fly out to Portugal and my dad came with us actually so that that was nice you know yeah. I got to, got to do that we played on a pitch that Ronaldo trained on yeah, yeah. we got battered like but <laughs> <laughs> um, that was mad Play, playing out in Portugal um, played against England at St George's Park and we drew 1-1 so that was Eastern nice um, yeah, yeah. yeah would you say that the standard was was better in Portugal or, or more overseas would you say there's they're a, just athletic is there a, so uh, athletic um, and they've got they've got more people to choose from as well, yeah. haven't they? You yeah. know, it's Portugal's Wales is like a little country. You know, three million people of us. Um, mm. But yeah, we we kind of stick together. As I think that's what kind of got us through that through them games on on Welsh Cup. Played against Scotland. We beat Scotland actually the last time we played them. Um, been out to Sweden as well for the Euro qualifiers at 17, which was mad. That was ten days in Sweden. We played against Italy. Who were scary? I tell you that. <laughs> they what were, was the score? I think they beat us three 0 I didn't play though. I had concussion, but um, played against France and I scored an own goal. But we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, they they beat us four one. I think they were very very good as well. Right, okay. um, and Sweden were the best team we played there. They play unbelievable football. They just they were like it's like playing against Barcelona. I I was I was Keep playing up. at the back and I just used to, I was just looking like it's the biggest female sport in America, isn't it? In women's football, has that ever been something you've ever thought about doing going over to America? Um, I've you know it does cross your mind on it. Um, I just think 
the America one's hard because how many pros have actually gone to America and come back and, and played in a WSL? Yeah. There, there's a few names, isn't there? But um, yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one because it's obviously school as well out there, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Um, I've thought about it. I just don't think I'd do it now. That Wrexham dream and that Wrexham. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not wearing that badge. <laughs> um, no, I don't think I would go. I mean, unless an offer properly comes, you you don't really think about it, do you? Um, but yeah, it is massive in America, and I think for probably for girls my age, I probably would say go because yeah, yeah. I know people who've gone out there and their football has just gone through the roof, you mm. know. And you're playing against big crowds, you're playing in front of big yeah, crowds, yeah, there. Yeah. you know, it's massive. I don't know which when they were, they were talking about your, um, when the Washington Post published about your documentary or your parenting documentary, and they were mentioning sort of they were telling their papers that the crowds are measured in dozens, not hundreds or even thousands, where the states, the crowds are huge, aren't they? Yeah. Would you say the coaching level is different? I know you have not experienced it, but the coaching level must be must be a high level out there, would you say? Yeah, possibly. I mean, we're very, very lucky at Wrexham to get very high level mm. coaches. You know, we've got Steve who's doing his A lessons at the moment and is an unbelievable coach and so is Josh, you know, mm. that they're very, very good coaches. Um, and I've also had the privilege of being coached by Gareth Owen as well, who's probably the, one of the best coaches in Wales. You've said that, haven't you? Yeah, I did say that. Yeah, I, get, uh, I played on the air, played the airbus with Gaz uh, as a uh, as manager and he yeah, was extremely very, good. very very good coach yeah, very so, good coach yeah. and I've had very good coaches when I, when I play for Wales as well so you know I don't think you can really compare, compare yeah. just because I, I've never been coached by an American coach either so yeah. I, I don't really know mm. but, Is there a different coaching style between the English setup than the Welsh setup? Um, I think a good coach is a good coach yeah, yeah, for yeah. me um, we had a scary coach at Everton he was scary but you need that in a coach, yeah, yeah. I think, to get performances mm. out of out, out of players. Um, but yeah, for me, a good coach is a good coach, whether it's on the other side of the board or whether it's in Wales. You know, I've never really come across a coach I thought not yeah, very yeah. good. You know, I've always respected my coaches and always felt like I want to perform for them. How do you yeah. react to the scary coach? Just want to play better. You know, I, you can be as scared as you want of mistakes, but. At the end of the day, a mistake's a mistake. Yeah. I probably make 100, 200 mistakes in a game and it's all about bouncing back. And I think some girls will hide from a, from a scary, especially a male coach as well. But yet that would inspire you on to, to, to prove him wrong. Um, not always, don't get me wrong. I've, <laughs> I've never, been, never always been in the mindset of being able to bounce back. I, I was at one point, you know, you doubt yourself sometimes, don't you? And you, you have yeah. them days where you think, you know what, I just, you just want to give up. Um, we- you just mentioned then that you made sort of 100, 200 mistakes, you know, in a game or in a session. I mean, that's really important, isn't it? Because I think a lot of girls, um, I know sort of my girls, they make one or two mistakes and they're scared to make mistakes. They sort of go into the shell a little bit, but even Lily Jones makes mistakes on the, on the football field. So it's okay to make mistakes, you know, isn't it? You know, we need to explain to our girls that mistakes happen. It's football. We are a human, mm. you know. Um, I, I used to get quite down about mistakes as well, you know. Obviously scoring that own goal in the Euros was down on myself for days. Mm. But I think the best thing you can do is get over it, reflect on the end of the game, you know, reflect after the game, reflect the next day if you have to, if you're, if you're not in the right space after the game, and think, you know what, I'm better than that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's bouncing back the next week. So it's the next time you're on that football pitch, it's bouncing back. And, you know, a mistake's a mistake. I remember at Everton, they used to tell us, pick a blade of grass up and let let that mistake be gone. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. pick it up, let it go, yeah. and then carry on if you need something like kind of visual to do. Um, but yeah, I think that's been a big thing, you know. Mistakes happen in a football game. You look at Premier League players, you know. They, they make mistakes, but then it's going to win the next tackle yeah, yeah. and winning the ball back. It's how you react to that mistake, isn't it? <clears> yeah, it's, it's all about the reaction every single time. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Um, Bit of fun now. So we were, we spoke before. So we're going to ask you now to name your dream five-a-side team with players you've played with. So the best five-a-side team. All right. So who are you having goal? So players you played with. Who are you having goal? Oh, this is and you can't one. just go rex them, rex them, rex them, rex them, rex them. Um, you have to grab some of your mates. I know. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've played with some good goalkeepers. To yeah. be fair. Um, so I've got three that I've popped into my head. Go on, do all three. Dal Morgan. Unbelievable. Yeah. Distribution is mad. Yeah, we were speaking about that, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Um, we look at the Britain Ferry game, her shot stopping was unbelievable to the dying, dying minutes of the game. Saf Patel yeah. I played with on camp. Yeah, I've only yeah. played with her a few times. Um, 
but her communication, the distribution, the shot stop. Well, come on, she's playing for United. Yeah, yeah. She's, there's a reason why she's United. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I've also played with this girl called Faye as well. I think Faye Jones, her name was. Um, she was at Everton, and I think she's just signed for Aberdeen. Okay. Um, just done her ACL actually, okay. but she was unbelievable. And I always used to think like she's gonna make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so but, uh, there's your three. There's my three. <laughs> but you gotta pick one. I've got to go Dell. Go go Just Del. just because of that playoff game. Yeah. The, the way I thought, like, how have you made that save? How have you come out in a one on one at the end of the game, put your leg out and made that save? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'll have to go down one. We were talking about Dell before about you know we're playing out from the back now. Dell is absolutely unbelievable over the ball. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, she's. Great goalkeeper and great person. Unbelievable coach as well. Yeah, right. yeah, really good coach. She yeah. she coached me at North Wales actually when I was growing up. She, she was living on the same street as me. Really? Um, I remember going for a run in her Everton gear and my dad pulled her in and I was doing a science project and my dad was like, oh, look at this project. I was like, dad, what are you doing? <laughs> like, this is a pro footballer here and you're getting her, getting her into the house. So, but yeah, yeah, I love Dal. She's a great right. player, great person. So we've locked Dal Morgan as your keeper. Okay. Hey, what are you going to at the back? Yeah, two at the back. Who are you going with? Right. I would know so many good centre backs, you know. Um, you can put yourself in if you want. Yeah, no, well, I'll do that. <laughs> um, I think Luisa and Karen have got to be up there for, for who I'd put in. You know, you look at the, the quality of the, our squad this season, mm-hmm. them two have brought it massively. Yeah. We're completely safe at the back with them two. Yeah. But I've also played with Holly Smith. She plays for Cardiff City. I don't know her very well I've been on a few camps with her, but I always used to think on camp like she's just a beast like she would just go through anyone I wouldn't say she's the fastest player but she's just like so strong and I used to be scared to go for a 1v1 with her in training I think that's what you need from yeah, a centre yeah. back um, yeah so I, th- I think it's got to be out of them three Katie Sharp as well um, she, she's still with us at Wrexham but I played a centre back partnership with her um, mm. All three last season as well. <laughs> she is up there. Did um, you start centre half at the race course? Did you two at the back? Yeah, yeah. Which you know, to have that with her is is mad. Um, but I think I'd have to go. I think I'd have to. Oh, I don't want to offend anyone. You know, I think I'd have to go Louisa Doran just because she wins yeah. every single header. She's very, very good. Very good in very the air. Good. She wins every tackle, and she is rapid. You know, if if I'm slogging behind, she's going to get to that ball. Um, I think I'd have to go Holly Smith as well, just because she's so scary. <laughs> but a really nice person, though, but she's, yeah, quality yeah. centre-back. So them are two right. centre-backs, I think. Two centre-backs, all right. You're attacking two. Well, you put, you'll be putting in a hop midfielder in there. You're going, you're going one up top. What are you doing? You're going two again. Yeah, I'll go two at the back, then two four-backs, a midfielder and a striker. Okay, go on. Midfielder, I'd have to go Grace Clinton. Straight uh, away. Yeah. 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 That's no one that I've played with that's good as her um, there's a there's a girl who's, who's training with us at the moment at like Wrexham Olivia Fuller she's unbelievable as well Hannah Carey Coplet again yeah. an, a, an amazing player um, we've got I, Hannah coming on we've got, we're, we're yeah. sitting down with Hannah soon so oh, but then you look at like Maisie Davis I've played with and she's <laughs> the most like level headed player I've ever played with there's so many good centre midfielders out yeah. there but I think I don't know if Grace Clinton would even remember me, but I, I, I <laughs> she's trained going with her at Everton, um, and just because of where she is now, you know, she's playing WSL and she's just yeah. been called up for the, for the Lionesses. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. just because of that, I think I, I'll have to lock her in there. Lock her in, lock <laughs> yeah. her in. All right, and then up top, it's got to be Rosie it's be on, it. on it. Come on, she yeah. scored a hundred goals, goals in hundred and forty-six games. Um, but I'd have to give a mention to Tiana Tizer as well. She's playing WSL for Bristol at the moment and um, played with her at Wales. Um, Lily Bader as well she played for, for Everton up top and she was scary as well you know in training she, her head was on and she was ready to play unbelievable striker but you know Rosie's just yeah. a menace you know she you do not want to go 1v1 against her because she'll nip it past and go, like, leave you for dead him, yeah, um, so yeah I'm going to have to lock Rosie Rosie, Rosie Hughes up in. top um, left winger now Um that's five. That's five. That's, That's five. Five, five aside. Don't five. I've do got want, five. Do you want to do seven aside? <laughs> I've left two wingers. Oh yeah, five aside. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone two one one, haven't I? When oh, you were doing the be formation I before, I thought you've counted about seven players there. Oh yeah. Go on, you will put your two wingers in. Two wingers. Yeah, go on, your wingers. Say Knox because she's my best mate. Okay. She's uh, been at City, been at Liverpool, and she's playing for Blackburn at the moment. Unbelievable player. She's just so skillful. Um, and then right wing, 
I think, oh, I don't know. Uh, I think I'd probably have to go Amber or, or Bex. Okay. He's playing with us now yeah. just because they were unbelievable on, on Sunday. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> yeah, just stuck you, in my you can't head. sit on the fence. You've got to pick one of them. I think I'd have to go Amber Light, but <laughs> she's one of, one of my best mates in the squad as well. So yeah, that'd be a good little team, not. That'll be decent for yeah, that. team, that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, absolutely, and again, a huge thanks, Lily, for, for coming to the studio and sitting with us on the, this girl. You, this girl can play the first ever episode. How was your experience, Buzz? Were you all right? I absolutely loved it. This <laughs> is mad, and I think it's going places. So I'm excited to be the, the first person on it. Brilliant. Well, he's been Leon Pickford. And that's been Andy Hughes, and this girl can, can play. play. <laughs> if you liked what you heard here today on this girl can play. Please like and subscribe on the links below and follow us on all our social media platforms.